So, well, let me say a disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> what although, you got, sis? Although I have birthed two babies, yeah, all pregnancies are different. All babies are different, so... Hello, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new, I am Ashley. And I'm Lachelle. And she's my sister. So, first question. How was your childbirth? Like, with both of your kids? The childbirth and experience? Yeah, the childbirth experience. Uh, with my first one, I went into labor a day after my due date. Um, it didn't go as planned, let me say that. I had a plan in my head. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what was that? Well, my plan was to go in and have a vaginal birth and just, you know, just pop that baby out. Have no complications, but it didn't happen like that. So what happened? So I went into labor. Mm, I stayed at home. When I got to the hospital, I was at five centimeters. By the time I filled out my paperwork and they took me back, I was at seven. Um, after that, I didn't want an epidural at first, and then, you know, my doctor asked me again when the contraction hit me. <laughs> so I was like, you know what, yeah, let me go on and get that. And so <laughs> when I got the epidural at seven centimeters, I completely stopped. Well, I didn't stop contracting, but I stopped dilating. Mm -hmm. I kept having contractions. I kept feeling my contractions, so my epidural did not work. And then after that, my baby's heart rate started going down. Wait a minute, I'm thirsty. Let me get some water. Mm -hmm. That's making me parched. <laughs> Look. So my first question, like with that childbirth experience, right? So you said you dilated five centimeters, like before you even, well, like, so I guess, and like before you got to the doctor. Before I got yeah. to the so doctor. So did your water break? Well, that was an interesting story too. The day before I went into labor, I, um, me and my mama, we went walking mm -hmm. up to my grandma house. <laughs> me and our mama, talking about my mama. Oh, well, you know how we say my mama, but it's <laughs> our mama. We walked up to our grandmother's house. And um, after I walked up there, I went to use the restroom. When I came to sit back down, I felt like a warm gush. And so I jumped up and ran back in the bathroom because I thought I had peed on myself. Mm -hmm. And so, um, my grandma was like, are you all right? And I was like, well, grandma, I think I peed on myself. And she was like, you sure that ain't your water? You know, we from the South, honey, so this is how we talk down here. And she's just being all proper on camera Yes, right you know, well, you, <laughs> I mean, you have to do that, you know. You don't have to, you can. But I understand, you versatile, yeah. put on that way too. But after that, um... That's eventually that's what we found out that's what it was. Um, so I ended up going to the hospital that night and I got sent back home. Uh the nurse told me that it wasn't amniotic fluid that was leaking out of me. It was pee. <laughs> she said it was something else. She said it was like some type of infection. I never got treated for the infection. I ended up going into labor the next day. My doctor was like you know, I kind of told her what happened the next day when I went into labor. She was highly upset. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to call your doctor. Well, I mean, you got to realize, too, I was 18. Okay. I didn't have all the resources that we have now. So Makes when sense. the nurse told me that that wasn't what it was, that's what I, I thought. You know, I, you know, my mom was like, no, you know, that's, that doesn't seem right. So I went back home, and the next day and I ended up going into labor. You went to the same hospital that I'm going to be going to? Yes. Okay. Hopefully things don't change 18 <laughs> years later. You feel me? Yeah. It all worked out in the end. Uh, when I ended up going back the next day, I actually was in, in labor, labor. When I went in, I was Wait, five. pause. Yeah. Slow down before you get to that five because I need to know. First and foremost, I heard and I went. Yes, I was watching this midwife um, talk about how you... You don't want your water to break because that's like a safety net for your baby in the yes. inside, right? Now, my water did not completely break. I had like a high tear in my bag. So that's why it only was gushing out a little bit at a time. And see, all I had saw what, what happened in the movies, you know, the lady with, oh my God, my water break. You see yeah. all this water. 
Uh, I didn't have it. So, but I don't, okay, I know some people will say like, you'll know when you're in labor. So like you said, you watch on TV, you think your water break mm-hmm. and then there goes a contraction. So, so I'm guessing like you don't want your water to break, but you do want to start paying attention to the contraction where well, you are going to start paying attention. To- yeah. So that's what we did. Like we, I noticed that I started having contractions. So how did you know it was, well, I guess it was so close to your due date. That's how you kind of felt like. Yes, but see, my stomach was like, now that I think back on it, the day before that, my stomach was just kind of hardening, but it wasn't painful. So the next day when I was feeling them, I was like, "Mm, you know, they started out as like little mild cramps and then they got stronger and stronger. So I would just kind of walk, I would go walking, walk down the road, come back, you know, I would just try to get comfortable. So after I ended up scaring my mama, (laughs) And then my mama ended up calling out Auntie, Auntie Vivian, who was a nurse. And so um, she put Vivian on the phone and, and I talked to her while I was having contractions. And she was like, you know, she had my mama to time, our mama. She had our mama to time the contractions. And then at that time, she was like, well, I think you need to go on to the hospital because you're scaring your mama. Yeah. And look, she was trying to act like she just got it all together. Yes. Talking about telling us to get it together. Yes. And she was scared. <laughs> now, I was not yelling now or anything like that. I have a very high tolerance for pain. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember from my little Lamaze class, I had went to a birthing class. You know, they told us about how to breathe. So you want to take control of your breath when you were having contractions. That is what's going to help you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, so my next question in between, like, uh, your story, right? So, you know, I'm having twins, right? Yeah. So, you know how they say that's, like, high risk or whatever. I feel like, um, you know, they tell you don't go right away when your contractions start. Mm-hmm. So, what would you would you advise me to, like, go right away? Because you never know what, like, if I'm different. Like, if my contractions no. just start... You know, when they go that. with the baby, you would just say, try to time it. Well, first of all, you got to do what's best for you. Yeah. So if you feel like you need to go to the hospital, then that's what you do. Um, but keep in mind, when you go to the hospital, you can't walk around. Well, I couldn't. Because you got an epidural, though. Well, that was after. After the fact. Yeah, but I've read that now, like they give like on your birth sheet, you can actually. Yeah, not see that's why I say it was different. Like back then, we didn't have no birth sheets and all of that, child. Mm-mm. So I was able to walk around while I was at home, but once I got to the hospital, I was pretty much confined to the bed. And I don't, I don't want that to happen. Yeah, you kind of don't want that because your, I mean, your body is meant to move you want to kind of maneuver you want the baby to, or the, in your case the babies to get in position to come on out you know see the lights my advice to you and to anybody else do what works best for you if you feel like you need to go to the hospital you need to uh, trust your intuition and go to the hospital how am i supposed to know that i don't know. i mean you you'll know it I guess, like, okay, so... You know, the, we're gonna take the a first time, and, and that's different, too, when you're in labor, when your first baby, you're usually in labor longer. I was in labor all day. And didn't know it? Are you saying before you went there? Or are you saying... Before, you I ended up going to the hospital around 6. From that morning when I got up, I had been having contractions, contractions... And so it wasn't until they got real close that I decided to go to the doctor. The reason why I asked is because, like, okay, hopefully this don't get too emotional. But, you know, like, with my first pregnancy, Mm -hmm. I was, what, 16 weeks? And Mm -hmm. so they had to induce me, and I had to actually have the baby. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, I think I was in that for, like, a day almost before I actually, like, Passed the baby out, mm-hmm. but I noticed that they kept coming in and they were like, "Are you feeling any pain yet?" And I was like, "No," like I did not feel pain until mm-hmm. like maybe three minutes before that mm-hmm. um the baby came out of oh, me. Okay. See, and that's why I'm like, I don't know, like, cause everybody's different. And then I know yeah. also that that baby was way smaller, yes. so that could be the reason why, like, I didn't feel mm-hmm. as much pain. 
I don't think the size has anything to do with the amount of pain that you feel. I don't think so. Oh, I don't know. Now, I would say like, that would be a conversation you should have with your doctor, like, like letting them know, like, hey, when is it a good time for me to come in? You know, they usually tell you, like, if your contractions are so many minutes apart, that's when you should come in, you know. So that's just a conversation that you should have with your, yeah. your doctor.